After working the body shirt, our next step is going to be the division shirt collar. Now, there are two types of collars in the patterns. Uh, I'm only going to be doing what's called the standard collar. Uh, the reason why is because so far my skills with the hero grade collar are not up to par, especially for doing a video. That's what I'm going to do here. So if you remember from the way in the beginning of our video, I showed you all of our pattern pieces. So this, again, is the division shirt collar standard size, uh, size XL. Uh, and the, of course, this means we just have one piece of our main body cloth, which is what this is. So we do have our fold line going here. This is our fold line. We want to make sure that our that this is on the fold. As you can see, we are here, we're even, uh, we're square, and everything fits just great. Now, if you remember earlier, I said that I was going to extend the width of this collar. I, I chose not to. I'm going to leave it as is because the person that I'm making this for doesn't have a very long neck. So I don't want the collar to sit so far up on under their chin that it, that it looks uncomfortable and is uncomfortable. However, let's talk about the length. Now, as I've made these shirts, um, I have found out that the, the length, as measured here, is not sufficient for the body of the shirt. Now, I know that the, the pattern creator is going to tell me, no, that's not true, but uh, it's just the way that it is for me. So I don't know if I'm just special uh, or there is something uh, for for the issue between the body of the shirt and the collar as it is so i am going to leave it as long as what it is and yeah that's going to give me a whole heck of a lot of extra which is important it's always better to have extra than not enough especially when it comes to sewing uh, in this side so what we're going to do we're going to open this up and again making sure that uh, we are we're identifying the uh, of course the the garment side uh, and then the the wrong side and there are two different tones I'm not sure if you're ever able to see this on camera but this is the shinier of the tone and this is the dull tone and this is the uh, the, the garment side what would be facing uh, towards everybody else so we are going to Fold this in half. Now the pattern and the pattern, pattern drafter provide excellent, excellent how to written directions. Uh, I, I refer to them all the time, absolutely. And one thing I've also learned about sewing is, is that uh, basting is your friend. If uh, you need to correct anything, basting is how you're going to save yourself. <clears throat> According to the directions, the, uh, the creator wants you to uh, sew a quarter inch seam along this edge here. Closing the bottom edge again with a quarter inch seam and a quarter inch seam. So that's all fine and good. And you can do that. Uh, here's the problem is that when you close this off with, with a full seam, you're just going to cause yourself a little bit of uh, a little bit of headache when you have to pick the stitches. Because anytime that I've made this shirt, I've always had to pick stitches to readjust this. So I will baste stitch this. Of course, I'm going to pin the edges to make sure they're nice and connected. Uh, and then what that's going to do is give me an opportunity to get the correct length. And then once I have the correct length around the, the collar and around the shirt body, I can then apply the permanent fusible stabilizer that's going to go on the edges. Why am I going to do that? Because that is also going to be what's going to support the zipper and the zipper trims along this side to give it that, that stability when you're doing that zipper up. So, uh, and also you don't want a floppy collar and because we want our collars to be crisp and, and uniform and military. That's right. So, uh, so that's what's going to happen. We're going to go to the machine, we're going to do some base stitching, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start pinning this guy 
onto the uh, the body of the shirt. We're back at our board. We've got our pins. I've taken some time to even up the edges here of the collar. Uh, so again, we're going to make sure that we're pinning in line with our with our sewing line, which of course is we have the uh, the ball of the pin, and then the shirt on the left, and the sharp going to the right. At this stage, we're now going to baste stitch the collar assembly closed along the length, and then I'm going to baste stitch the, the edges closed. And once that's done, then we're going to take the collar and then we're going to baste stitch it to the shirt body. We're ready to attach our collar to our shirt body. Uh, if you remember, we've taken our time. We sold up, sewn our shoulder seams at uh, three at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. The and these are fully closed. Um, and of course, but why do I say that? Because we took the time and we chose to baste stitch our collar. Why? Because it's it's just important it's it helps you reduce your frustration um and honestly when it comes down to sewing uh, a base stitch is your best friend especially when garment sewing now i think i think in this light in this position you should be able to tell the difference now between the uh the darker and the uh the shinier or lighter cloth and as as i look at this i think i can finally show it on camera so i hope that you're able to finally see what i've been talking about in the last little while and that was there two there are two definite different shades now as we move on uh, i am going to be pinning the the collar all the way around the the collar line of the shirt and I'm going I'm not going to adjust anything on this side. I'm only going to continue on and then once we get to this point, then I'm going to clip snip and make sure that this is the proper length because it uh, curves for some strange reason and I don't know why. Maybe you geometry folks can help me out. Uh, but curves always seem to take up more cloth. So that's why I always extend the length of my collars. Now, as you remember, we base stitched this a quarter inch just to give it some form so we can so we can use it. And then once we have the correct length, we're going to open this up. Again, we're going to take the base stitches out. We're going to open this up. We're going to put on some permanent fusible stabilizer, and that's going to give our collar some body so that it actually stands up properly. Okay, let's get to pinning. Do you remember how I said we should always go in line uh, of our sewing? Well, guess what? I uh, I was about to make a mistake with my pinning and I was about to get all kinds of frustrated. So I've corrected myself. I've, I've realized that, you know, as we start sewing, I'm going to be starting on the left hand side of the shirt. And as I do my pinning, I'm going to go in line with, with our sewing direction. So I'm glad I took that moment. I'm glad I caught myself before before I ended up having to pull a bunch of pins and uh, lose my patience.
Okay, we're done. We've taken the time to uh, properly pin our shirt collar onto our onto our shirt neck line. As you can see, I struggled a little bit because I wasn't paying attention. I had a little bit of curl going on underneath here, and I want to make sure that I have as uh, all the edges together as much as possible. And yeah, look, look at. Uh, of course, uh, this is our edge here. This is our collar edge. As you can see, that's where our, our uh, stabilizer is. So yeah, we have a lot here. And with that being said, I, I'm now confident that I can, uh, I can take this and I can, I can extend it by, oh gosh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to extend it probably by maybe a, a quarter of an inch. Uh, and in doing that, that's going to give me that safety factor because as always with sewing, uh, if you have too much, you can always trim it away. But sadly, if it's too short, you gotta start over. All right, on to the next step.